Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nikki Fain, Interim Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs. Good afternoon, distinguished guests and members of the college community. I'm Nikki Fain, Interim Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs. And welcome to Lehman's inaugural State of the College Address. But before I go any further, I'd like to give a very special welcome to two very special guests. Dr. Rima Brusi, President Cruz's wife, a cultural anthropologist, writer, and advocate for educational equity, and their son, Alvaro. Please. <laughs> so, Alvaro, this is really for you. Your dad, and your mom's husband, has spent a considerable amount of time elevating this noble institution. But I want to acknowledge publicly that that means a lot of time away from you and your transition to a new city, occasional snowstorms, a new school, and new friends. So on behalf of the entire Lehman community, thank you. Thank you for sharing him with us. I know there's nothing that a middle school um, young adolescent likes better than all this attention. <laughs> okay, now I'd like to ask you to turn your attention to the screen. A brief video presentation has been pre prepared for today's event. The video is an homage to Lehman College and the amazing work being done here. The work of the faculty and staff but most importantly, the work of our students, the students who are transformed by us. And then they go out into the world, and then they realize their dreams, empowered by a Lehman education. Our students make us proud. At Lehman College, your dreams turn into aspirations, your motivations into actions. At Lehman, we help you achieve your goals today. Lehman shows you how to transform your hard work and commitment into a smarter and better future for all of us. Together, we inspire each other and empower each other because we believe in dreams. Here, students don't just study cancer, they strive to cure it. They don't just study business, they start their own. They don't just play music, they create it. They don't just live in our community, they change it. Every day, our amazing faculty and students who come from all over the world follow their dreams and create their own Lehman stories. Here at Lehman College, what will your story be? Good afternoon. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, first of all, I would like to thank some special guests before I get started formally with my remarks. We have with us in the house today some uh, of our distinguished members of our Alumni Association Board, Mr. Keith Happany, Ms. Brenia De La Cruz, Mr. Robert Brownell, and Ms. Jeannie Rodriguez. Please, let's give them a round of applause. From the Lehman College Foundation Board, joining us today, Mr. Michael Fassler, President and CEO of Center Light Health System, Dr. Emilio Martinez, Director of the Bronx Institute here at Lehman College, and Dr. Soros Roshan, President of the International Health Awareness Network. Please give them a round of applause. I also want to thank our colleagues in the Office of the President, the Division of Academic Affairs and Information Technology, the Departments of Buildings and Grounds, Lehman Stages and BronxNet 
for organizing this event. Additionally, I want to thank and ask for a big round of applause for our colleagues who produced the video we just saw. Brendan. <laughs> Brendan McGibney, Kevin Korb, Joe Turella, Tom Stoddard, Steven Buonanote, and Michael Bacon. And I want to acknowledge the presence of um, my muse in life, Dr. Rima Brusi. We uh, just celebrated 12 years of marriage a week ago. <laughs> and my son, Alvaro Juan Cruz Brusi, who even though, even though he knows that this is going to cut into his screen time today, he gamefully uh, decided to be here in support of his dad. So it has been a little over six months since the inaugural convocation of our college's third presidency, and it is my great honor to stand before you here today and report that the state of our college is strong, resurgent, and energized. You may recall that at convocation, I expressed my confidence that in the years ahead, Lima would increase its impact, expand its reach, and meet its full potential as an engine of opportunity, a vehicle of upward mobility, and a driver of transformative change. You may also recall how I professed my confidence that in the years ahead, Lehman would emerge as a national model of how colleges and universities can implement equity-driven policies and practices to better support the millions of students in America today who, because of the color of their skin, the balance of their checking account, their place of origin, or the tenets of their faith have not been afforded the opportunities they need to meet their full potential. I hope that you'll be pleased to know that notwithstanding the turbulent backdrop against which we have been operating during the last half year, that I continue to feel confident about our prospects on both fronts. Yes, I realize that the road ahead is a difficult one, we're increasingly feeling the effects that years of state and city disinvestments in higher education have had on our physical and virtual infrastructure, the workloads of our faculty and staff, and the capacity and affordability of our academic programs. And now, we are bracing for potentially devastating budget cuts to federal agencies and programs that directly and indirectly help advance our mission. Agencies and programs that work for the betterment of lives, the advancement of scientific knowledge, the engagement of our peoples through arts and humanities, and the improvement of educational attainment. Yes, a difficult road ahead, but my confidence remains strong. First, because Lehman College has ably navigated stormy waters in the past and still managed to be recognized nationally for its role in propelling large numbers of low-income students into the middle class. Second, because Lehman knows how to extract joy from defiance when facing attacks to the tenets of social justice that sustain its mission. Our college's namesake, Herbert H. Lehman, stood for social justice, and we do too. And third, because as the nature, density, and quality of your work in the past year clearly indicates, our college is as resilient as the storied borough of the Bronx with which it is inextricably intertwined. So what has that work here at Lehman looked like? It is a difficult question to answer within the limited time available to us, particularly if one is interested in capturing the full spectrum of our college's multifaceted work. The engineer in me wanted to craft a structured response. At first, I tried to categorize the work by organizational divisions, then by campus constituencies, and finally by thematic areas. In all cases, the resulting narrative failed to illustrate the cross-divisional collaborative way in which we do our work. And to me, it didn't seem right. It seemed to give credence to Clark Kerr's famous characterization of universities being nothing more than a series of separate schools and departments held together by a central heating system. <laughs> so in the end, I embraced free association in crafting my response to what our work here at Lehman has looked like. 
Here at Lehman, the work of our faculty and staff continues to earn national recognition and top rankings for our undergraduate and graduate programs. Grant for Revenue reached $22 million, a 64% increase over the prior year. Research awards included funding for projects in areas ranging from astrophysics, cosmology, and collider physics to cancer therapy, to geometric compactness theorems with applications to general relativity, and to socialization patterns of adolescents during transition out of high school. Our first ever college-wide discovery, innovation, and imagination student scholarship showcase, a celebration of research and creative activities, takes place next month. We're about to formalize a research agreement with two universities in Cuba, and we have made good progress towards developing a research teaching and learning commons, establishing a faculty-friendly approach to overhead distribution, and adequately staffing our Office of Sponsored Programs and Research. Here at Lehman, a new program for a master's degree in organizational leadership is moving forward, as is the first cohort of our online certification program for teaching gifted and talented students. Our institutional self-study design document has been approved by our liaison at the Middle States Commission on Higher Education. A grant from the New York City Small Business Services will allow us to participate in the Tech Talent Pipeline Residency Program. We landed a $5.7 million grant for our Pathways to STEM Success project to increase the number of Hispanic and lower income students who graduate with STEM degrees. We've signed a memorandum of understanding with both Ostos and Bronx Community Colleges to guarantee seamless transfer for students coming our way. And in a public-private partnership with Eon Reality, Inc., our School of Continuing and Professional Studies is launching a virtual augmented reality training academy at CUNY on the Concourse, where our Cisco Networking Academy classes continue to take place. Here at Lehman, we continue to exceed our enrollment targets even as enrollments across the university are flat or declining. Implementation of new software programs and expanded hours in the counseling, advising, and career development centers have improved access to services, provided cost savings, and improved student walking experiences. Electronic workflows now support a number of innovative enrollment and student retention plans. And the determined collaboration of academic departments Opening new sections for high enrollment, high waitlist courses has positively influenced student retention and progression rate. Here at Lehman, our talented and dedicated students, supported by our amazing faculty and staff, are achieving their academic goals and graduating at record levels. Graduation rates for freshmen and transfer students are trending up, particularly for Sikh students who have seen their graduation rates increase by nearly 13 percentage points. Some of our talented students have received early Gilman scholarships and secured over a half a million dollars in research awards and scholarships and fellowships for postgraduate studies. Student athletes, supported by dedicated coaches, two of whom have received CUNYAC Coaches of the Year awards, have also achieved much recognition, including the 2016 CUNYAC Men's Soccer Championship the Women's Tennis Player of the Year and Rookie of the Year awards, and an honorable mention, All-American in Women's Basketball. And, <laughs> and we expect to grant a record of over 3,300 degrees this year. Here at Lehman College, the college's outreach to our Bronx community includes a number of grant-funded initiatives for our science technology entry program aimed at secondary students, for the New York City Men's Teach Initiative, and for the Bronx Institute's Project Alpha. The adult degree program has increased enrollment by 15% and is finding ways to break through the math barrier that so often stalls upward mobility. We were selected to participate in the new CUNY Cultural Corp initiative, and to date, more than $2 million have been raised through the efforts of our friends in the Lehman College Foundation and the work of our campus community. The Urban Male Leadership Program, for example, recently raised $30,000 in its first fundraising event for UMLP academic scholarships. <laughs> Here
Here at Lehman, we completed a $41 million central heating and cooling plant upgrade project, implemented the first phase of upgrades of faculty office space, and remodeled the student health center. We created four new multimodal computer classrooms, upgraded technology in the Gillette Auditorium, and improved wireless access in Carmen and Schuster Halls. We will soon open a food pantry on campus, and the CUNY Board of Trustees approved our request for $12 million to fully fund the construction of our Nursing Education Research and Practice Center. <laughs> Work on the 50,000 square foot state-of-the-art teaching facility will begin next year. Here at Lehman, the newly established CUNY EDGE program will provide focused counseling and advising support to students receiving public assistance. Immigration Legal Services for students and members of the surrounding community were launched in support of the Jaime Lucero Mexican Studies Institute and CUNY Citizenship Now. 24-hour library study hall was inaugurated for the final two weeks of the fall 2016 semester. Yes. <laughs> this is a big accomplishment for our student leaders. And it benefited over 770 students. And Lehman has earned top owners among senior Colleges on wireless access, help desk availability, and satisfaction with computer labs as measured by the most recent CUNY-wide Student Experience Survey. I could go on and on about how here at Lehman our faculty and staff continue to progress in our quest to eradicate educational inequities through the K-12 program spearheaded by each and every one of our schools how our faculty and staff continue to expand economic opportunities through workforce and business development programs managed by our School of Continuing and Professional Studies and our Small Business Development Center, how our faculty continue to embrace their role as teacher scholars, preparing our students for meaningful lives and careers in today's globalized society, engaging our students in theoretical, applied, and meaningful scholarship, and pushing the frontiers of knowledge in their chosen disciplines, and how we continue to foment cultural engagement through BronxNet, our many distinguished centers and institutes, the Lehman Center for the Performing Arts, the Lehman College Art Gallery, Lehman Stages, and the world-class Apex Center, among others. But you get the point. We're making things happen, getting things done. It's all happening here at Lehman College of the City University of New York. It's all. <laughs> and I think you know what I'm going to say next. It's all happening here at the most important, mission critical, senior college of the world's premier public urban university. <laughs> so yes. Yes, there are plenty of reasons why I remain confident that we will one day meet our full potential as drivers of transformative change. But I caution us against allow allowing the density of activity we engage in and the accomplishments we accumulate along the way to lead us to complacency. The Equality of Opportunity Project the organization that recently recognized us for our role in propelling large numbers of low-income students into that middle class has also concluded that the Bronx is extremely bad for income mobility for children in poor families, that it is among the worst counties in the U.S. in helping poor children up the income ladder, that it ranks better than only about 5% of counties in the country. Other organizations have also found that 42% of the population in the Bronx is living in distress, and that the borough's opportunity index merits a failing grade of D+. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't mean to dismiss this simple fact. The Bronx Renaissance is on. The economy here is booming with new jobs in the tech, film, and media industries. Neighborhoods are bustling with renovation projects. Parks are being beautified. Cultural institutions are serving an ever more diverse community. And unemployment rates have dropped to historic lows. I celebrate the efforts of all those who have contributed to the forces 
that have the Bronx moving forward and trending upward. And our college is proud of the role it has played to help chart the path and contribute to where the Bronx is today. But it is precisely because, as an anchor institution, we are inextricably intertwined with the Bronx that we cannot be lulled to inaction by the seductive sound of our own success. Instead, we must continuously explore ways to expand opportunity and accelerate progress. As you may imagine, I have been thinking a lot about this in the past several months, as I have reflected on the hundreds of hours of conversations I've had with our campus community and examined the strategic context in which we operate. I have come to realize that in addition to considering the seven institutional standards associated with our accreditation process, in addition to considering the dozens of recommendations made through the college's program prioritization review, in addition to considering the numerous strategic objectives established in the recently approved CUNY Master Plan and CUNY Strategic Framework, and in addition to considering the many dreams and aspirations of each and every member of our campus community, that we need a bold, audacious, grand challenge to help organize and resource the work. A grand challenge that will help us clarify our vision and solidify our identity as the nation's ultimate urban serving institution. A grand challenge that will serve as a touchstone for how we think about everything that advances our mission and informs our work, including, but not limited to, conversations around curriculum development, teaching modalities, the role of information technology and online programs, student services, student enrollment management, globalization initiatives, research and creative activities, institutional effectiveness, campus facilities, faculty recruitment, retention, and promotion, staffing levels, professional development, campus climate, campus safety, contracts and grants, institutional advancement, public engagement, cultural engagement, high impact practices, student success, and the myriad issues that occupy our minds in day in and day out in this great college. We need an organizing principle, something that will allow us to make the case as to what it is that we will be focusing on and why it is that we need additional resources to get the job done. To this end, I'd like to challenge us to double the number of degrees and credentials that our students are expected to earn by the year 2030. I want us to think about how to double to 90,000 the number of degrees and credentials we award over the next 12 years. 90,000 by the year 2030. 90 by 30. Why should we focus on educational attainment? Because increasing the number of citizens with a post-secondary education leads to reduced unemployment, higher wages, increased civic and voter participation, and improved physical and mental health. Why should the goal be to double the number of degrees and credentials? Because doubling the number would directly impact 45,000 additional lives and position us, the only CUNY four-year college in the Bronx, as the top contributor of post-secondary degrees and credentials in the borough. Why should we strive to do so within the next 12 years? Because doing so would dramatically increase the likelihood that children currently attending K-12 schools in the Bronx and the surrounding region would benefit from the value of a Lehman education. Either because they will earn a Lehman degree or credential themselves, or a parent or relative will do so. How do I suggest we approach this grand challenge? in a thoughtful and purposeful way that leverages the collective wisdom of our campus community, that relishes the opportunity to design a way forward that is unconstrained by a zero-sum frame, and by, in the parlance of the video that preceded my remarks here today, inspiring and empowering each other so we can transform our dreams into aspirations and our motivations into action. To facilitate this approach, in the next several weeks, we will be piloting a crowdsourcing platform, one that I hope will help accelerate our thinking about this grand challenge and result in a way forward that meets the expectations of the academic, administrative, and deliberative bodies of this noble institution. I am confident we can meet this grand challenge. 
This is not only a dream. It is not only my dream. It is what I'd like my living story to be. So be rest assured that in leading us into the second half of our first century, I will heed Aldous Huxley's words and dream in a pragmatic way. As always, I look forward to the hard but important work ahead. Thank you for all you do on behalf of our students, our community, and this great borough of the Bronx. Thank you.